Hey guys. You know, I've been meaning to mention these for quite a while. I, I am a firm believer in sleeping on silk pillowcases. I don't sleep on silk sheets, but I do sleep on silk pillowcases. And I probably wouldn't mind sleeping on silk sheets. I bet you that would be a nice experience too. But I've been using silk pillowcases for quite a while because I'm a side sleeper. When you're a side sleeper, you kind of crunch your face up and things of that nature. And I normally wake up and I've got like indents and I've got, you know, my hair is all over the place. It's like hysterical. I started using silk pillowcases probably, hmm, I'm going to say maybe about four years ago. And I really, really like it. Now, I just use the silk pillowcases on my pillows, not on poor Jay's. He gets the regular pillows, but I get the silk. So, because I love silk pillowcases, I sleep on silk pillowcases, and I really believe in them, I jumped at the opportunity to try and review the MYK silk, my kind of silk. This is a really really nice product. They reached out to me a couple of months back and they said, would you like to try our silk pillowcases? I could go on their website. I could pick the ones I wanted. I picked two. I didn't do king size. I just did like the queen size pillowcase with the zipper. I wanted it to be silk all the way around. So I got the zipper so that my pillow wouldn't slide out. And I took two of them. I got a pretty pink and I got a pretty black and uh, the black I thought would be perfect because in my motorhome I have black sheets so I said yes and even though the pink would look really good in the motorhome too so I jumped at the opportunity and I said absolutely so they sent them to me and this was months ago and I really haven't even mentioned them but I've been laundering them I've been using them I can't tell you how many times I have washed these since I've had them but at least I would say probably eight to ten times because I usually do my sheets once a week and I've had this for over two months and I'm going to link you all the information because I also have a discount code for 15% off if anyone is really interested but these are really really lovely and if you are a woman or even a man of a certain age and you really want to get a good night's rest and indulge yourself in the sense of sleeping on silk so that you have the opportunity to not make your wrinkles worse overnight maybe. This is definitely something you want to look into. So this is the MYK Silk and it is just absolutely beautiful. It's I think based out of New York and again I will list all the information. So all these washes they've gone in the dryer even. Although I don't usually like to dry them, I usually like to hang them on the clothesline. They have held up so nicely. Highly, highly recommend this to anyone if you're thinking about you know, going on the silk bandwagon because silk sheets and silk, well, I shouldn't say silk sheets, silk pillowcases cases feel absolutely divine in my opinion. What this video is really all about is trying to answer some questions. I get a lot of questions in some of my comments. I get them both on my YouTube page and also on my Instagram. So every now and then I do dedicated videos to answering your questions. And one of the questions that I've gotten repeatedly since I've done a few Retin-A videos is, well, what about summertime? You're using Retin-A, you're doing all this stuff. What are you doing in the summertime? So quite frankly, I, I don't stop using Retin-A in the summertime. I may dial it down a bit depending on how my skin is and if I'm doing a microderm ex, uh, exfoliation that week. You know, it all really depends on what my routine is for the week, what I do, <coughs> oh, excuse me, what I do with my Retin-A use. So I may dial it down a bit and I may also dial it down a bit when we go away. So if we're going, say, to the beach for a week, I may only use my Retin-A once during the week or twice during the week instead of three or four times. So I dial it down a little bit, but what I ramp up, major, major ramp up, is sunblock. And that's the question I get a ton, a ton of questions on, sunblock. I am not a chemist, I'm not an expert, I don't know one thing about another on sunblock, and I'm still in the stage of willing to try 
anything people recommend. So I've been using, I think this is the second year, maybe the third, that I've been using the Australian Gold. I've mentioned this a number of times on my channel. I use this, this is my cheap go-to, excuse my nails, I really need to get them done, they're really ugly looking, I'll try to hide them. This is my cheap, <laughs> giving up on that. This is my cheap go-to every day. This is tinted, it's not a bad tint for me. This is mineral and it, for me, the only way I can make this work because my skin is drier is to put a heavy duty good moisturizer on before I do my sunblock. So what I normally do in the summertime because I'm ramping up my sun, sun coverage is after I do my serums in the morning, I'm gonna go in with an all over sunblock and it's usually this because it's tinted, gives me a little bit of color, but it gives me a lot of protection. But before I even do that, most of the time, I'm going to use one of these two oils. And more often than not, it is the, the squalene oil. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this is the one from The Ordinary. I have a bottle in there from Timeless. I like them both. And so the squirreline oil is a really lighter oil for me. It goes on really nice. It absorbs into my skin. The other oil that I really like, but this is a heavier oil, is the carrot oil. And I'll make sure that I link this. The carrot oil, I think I really like that one more at night. But in the summertime because it's time for me to really ramp up that sunblock protection because of my retin-a if i don't put an oil on my face this is hard for me to put on because it's drying so if i do a nice base of oil and i have a nice smooth moist canvas then i put this on and i'm going to put it on just so you can see well used the color because it is tinted so i just want you to see the color of this and I put a whole lot on my hand. I don't know if this is picking it up at all. But this is what I put all over my face. And yes, on my hands in the morning. So I normally will put this on all over. I let it dry in really good. Now again, I'm not going to do this until I've put the oil on my face. I just, I just can't. So I have to put like some sort of oil, some sort of really good moisturizer on my face to make this work for me. Otherwise, I am not going to be a happy camper with my sunblock. So then I will let that settle in. This is 50 SPF. And this is the Australian Gold Mineral Lotion Non-Greasy, which is why I need to get some grease up. Now, the caution, when I start layering my sunblock, at the end of the day, it's really a difficult process to take it off. Sometimes I have to do three and four washes on my face just to get rid of it all. But it's the price I gladly pay to have the protection. So I let this settle in. It gives me a nice overall tint. If I'm home for the weekend or I'm just going out, that's sometimes all I put on with a little bit of blush, maybe a little bit of contour or something like that. But in general, I need a little bit more coverage during the day. So after that dries, I use the Shiseido. This is the BB Cream 50 SPF. And this is in the shade Medium. So it's the 50 SPF in the shade Medium. I'm going to show you that on my hand so you can see it's well used. I don't want to use a whole lot because I don't want to waste the product. So I'm going to put that in my hand. It just really blends into my skin. So if it's a sunny day, that's going on next. I don't really put it like all over my face. My Australian Gold goes all over my face, into my neck, down into my cleavage area. Cleavage? Cleavage? area but the shishado goes around my nose goes around my cheeks goes on my forehead and then that's about it so that's how my morning starts on sunny bright days in the summertime these are the two go-to products that i have then in my pocketbook i have and i will say that the color science was sent to me initially but before it was sent to me i bought my own so I have two color sciences. Now some people will say, how do you know you're actually getting any coverage? 
you know, while at this point in time when I'm using it, I'm using this more as a touch up during the day and I can pretty well tell if anything is coming out. You know, I'll shake it really good and I'll just put it on. So I have two of these, one that was sent to me via the Octoline Network from Color Science quite a while ago. I already talked about it, I already reviewed it, but I also have one that I bought. And I will tell you when they're gone, I will continue to buy them because it lives in my purse. And so during the day, if I need a quick touch up, this is what I'm going to use 90% of the time. Now. If I'm inside and I'm going out and I'm going, you know, maybe I'm going for, you know, somewhere where I know I'm going to be outside a while and I want to just make doubly sure I'm covered. This was also sent to me quite a while ago from a more Pacific and this is actually in the shade medium pink. And this is a 50 SPF compact. I've already talked about this. I will tell you I have two of these. I like it. this is an expensive product but it also comes with a refill so you get a little little poofy thingy and then you have the cushiony base so this is our cushion SPF foundation sunblock I'm putting it on top and can you see? I'm gonna have a heck of a time washing my makeup off tonight I like this it's moist it's not drying it lasts on me when I've used this during the day, it's last on me all day. It's expensive, and yes, this one's free for me. However, that's not tainting my opinion because I already reviewed it, and I already did a first look at it. Now I'm just gonna tell you because the questions have come up about sunblock. I really like this a lot. I like this a lot. I will most likely continue to use this unless something better comes along. It kind of reminds me of a couple of years ago I was using a, phys a physician's formula cushion SPF foundation and I used to like that when I dipped it in there that I had a lot of product that I could put on my face. The difference between this and that is the physician's formula did not cover nearly as well as this. This, this is like a really nice solid coverage it'll last on me it doesn't look bad it doesn't get creasy it doesn't get icky looking it actually looks really really good so this is a big win for me so I start with my cheap I also have the Neutrogena clear face and this is a 30 SPF I also have another Neutrogena I like the Neutrogena face SPFs and I'm not talking anything for the body that's a whole different story guys but I like the face SPF a lot um, but this is sort of like when I'm having you know, beating around, I'm on a bike ride or something like that, and I just want to put something on and, and uh, put it right over my makeup, and that's what I use. But 99% of the time, this is every morning in the summertime, followed up by spots for the BBB, the Shiseido BBB 50 SPF. And then touch-ups on the road, on the go, is going to be my color science and my beloved Amore Pacific. I really like this. This I am treating very gently because I don't want it to run out. I really, really like this a lot. And that's all I'm really doing. Now, none of my sunblock would work on my face if it wasn't well lubricated. So again, I need to start with a nice canvas and then I let everything dry and I put that on. Now, when I'm using the Shiseido BB uh, Sport SPF, I don't need any primer. I don't use any primer. I just put that right on on top of my sunblock and it goes really, really well. The, the Shiseido is a lot more expensive than the Australian Gold, so the Shiseido is just for those spots that I want additional more coverage or more of a foundation look. And the Australian Gold is the all over for me. That's what's really working for me at this point in time. I really like it a lot. That's my go-to summer protection. And yeah, I still use Retin-A all summer, guys. All summer. And then I have hats. I got all these ball caps that I've been wearing. A ton of ball caps. I have straw hats. So when I'm outside now in the sun, if I'm working around the house, I'm going to have a hat on outside if I'm doing yard work. If I'm at the beach, I'm going to have a straw hat on. I'm going to gravitate to an umbrella. There's all those little proactive things that you do to try to protect your skin a little bit when you're out there in the sun. 
and I drink a ton, a ton of water. I stay totally, totally hydrated. So that I hope that answers the sunblock questions and the Retin-A. So if you decide that you want to stop using Retin-A in the summertime, that's fine. That's up to you. But I figure, you know what, I've been using it for this long and my skin is doing so well I'm not going to stop using it for three months. I'm not. Now, if it's going to go away to Hawaii for 10 days, I wouldn't be using it every night either. You know, I'm going to really pay attention. And if I'm in a real humid, you know, climate, I might use it a little bit more because the humidity would probably feel really good on my skin. So that's the scoop, guys. I hope I answered your questions. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. I can't believe how many of you have been visiting me here on a regular basis. I so appreciate it, every single one of you. Thank you so much. Oh, and don't forget the silk pillowcases. Check out the link below. Thanks, guys. Bye.